Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This is the second video in this series on measuring the input impedance of a circuit or device. In the first video, I was concerned with measuring the input impedance of a low frequency device like an audio amplifier. In this case, I was unconcerned about the complex aspects of this input impedance. In this video, I'm going to measure the input impedance of a small received preamplifier that is found in this lovely VHF amplifier. Now, in this case, I am going to be concerned about the complex aspects of this input impedance. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, with, as with any project, Planning our measurement is the first step. As I'm thinking about an amplifier, there are two things I will be concerned about. The first is what are the input requirements? Now, this is a VHF amplifier for use in the amateur radio two meter band. This tells me that my frequency span of interest will be from 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. Now, it has a receive preamplifier rated at 20 dB of gain. Now, I measured its frequency response in a previous video. You can see the link to that video up in the corner. Now, as a receive preamp, I have to assume that the limitations on signal levels in the input coincide with received signal levels that one might encounter. Anything beyond this, can have a significant and potentially deleterious effect on both the device itself and on the accuracy of the measurement. Now, looking at the standard signal levels for VHF and UHF, I see that an S9 signal is minus 93 dBm. A blasting in signal at S9 plus 40 dB is minus 53 dBm. We do not want to use a stimulus signal too much above this. Now, my hope was to use my nano VNA to measure this input impedance. And this was the initial goal of this video. So we have to ask, what is the stimulus level of the nano VNA itself when it's making impedance measurements? These are also known as reflective or S11 measurements. Now, I have measured mine at minus 9 dBm, and there is a menu option to change this to either 0 dBm or minus 6 dBm. But as I measured it, that menu item doesn't make any difference in the actual stimulus level. What this means is that I have to attenuate the stimulus by no less than 30 dB or maybe even more to avoid overdriving the front end of this amplifier. The question is, can the nano VNA do this? Well, I'm going to set up my nano VNA with a 30 dB attenuator connected to its port zero. Now, let's set up our nano VNA for this measurement. My frequency span will be 144 to 148 megahertz. I'll have all the traces shut off except trace one. Trace one will display a reflective measurement with a Smith chart format. I will calibrate the nano VNA at the output of the 30 dB attenuator. Then I will attempt to measure the calibration, open, short, and load to verify that it does these three basic operations properly. Now the calibration is complete, and I'm looking at the load, expecting a dot in the middle of the screen. Instead, I see this mass of lines flying everywhere. Now, just to see what would happen, let's turn on measurement averaging.
even with 80 measurements per average, which is the maximum allowed, I still have a screen full of lines flitting everywhere. So the question is, how much can I use? I did a lot of playing with attenuation values. It depends a lot on the level of noise you want in your measurement. In this frequency range, the maximum attenuation I can tolerate is 15 dB, and you can see the amount of noise in the measurement. Let's take a look and see what it does at a short. Again, we can see all the noise in the measurement here. And and open. And you can see there's still, you watch these values, they're all over the place. Well, unfortunately, this doesn't get me anywhere near where I need to be for this preamp. <sighs> Sadness ensues. I'm going to have to move to my Tektronix VNA. Now, the principles remain the same with the higher-end VNA, so stay tuned. Well, my Tektronix VNA allows me to set the stimulus level. Now, I wanted to be sure, so I set this to minus 40 dBm, and then measured it with my spectrum analyzer. Yep, it is minus 40 dBm. This means that there is no attenuator required. I like that idea. Now, let's see how it performs. Well, as expected, there is some fuzziness to the measurement. I mean, think of it. We're using a stimulus of only 2.2 millivolts. Some noise in the measurement is to be expected. We add some averaging and smoothing, and, well, we have it very definitely within reason for what we're trying to do. So, what is the second concern associated with this process? Now, this is an easy one. We always have to be sure that the output of our amplifier is properly loaded. The assumption here is that the output of the amplifier is intended to be connected to the antenna connector of an HT or similar radio. This is assumed to be a 50 ohm load. Thus, we will have to be sure to place an appropriate 50 ohm load on the output of the amplifier. Well, let's start with the connections. This is very simple. I have the power for my amplifier connected to a suitable power supply. Now, it's a little confusing when it comes to which connector is the input and which is the output because, well, this amplifier is a two-way street. It has a power amplifier to take the 5 watt FM signal from your HT and turn it into a 35 watt signal to the antenna. In this case, the input is the TX slash input connector and the output is the antenna slash output connector. I'm going to make absolutely sure that the TX power amp switch is turned off. I do not want to blow the front end of my VNA even by accident. It also has a 20 dB receive preamp. And in this case, the antenna slash output connector is the input, and the TX slash input is the output connector. We are going to be measuring the input impedance of this receive preamp, so I will make sure the RX preamp power switch is turned on. So, I am going to install my 50 ohm load on the TX slash input connector. And when I'm ready to do the measurement, I will connect port 1 of my Tektronix VNA to the antenna slash output connector using an N to UHF adapter. More on this later. Now, let's set up the VNA. First, I will be making an S11 or reflective measurement. I will set the frequency span to start at 144 MHz and the stop frequency of 148 MHz. I want markers at the ends of the band and in the middle, so I will set up markers at 144 MHz, 146 MHz, 
and 148 megahertz. For stimulus, I will set the power level to minus 40 dB. I'm going to turn on data averaging with 64 averages. And I'm going to enable smoothing. Now I'll do a quick calibration. I do not have a set of calibration standards which sport a female UHF connector, so I will have to do a little fanciness to accomplish our goal. I will have to add an end to UHF adapter. And to accommodate the change in the location of the measurement of the reference plane, I will have to add a port extension. With the end to UHF adapter in place, I will set the display format to phase, and the scale to 2 degrees per division. Now I apply the port extension until the phase is very, very close to zero on all three markers. I have to wait for the averaging to occur. We're all done here. Now we can choose to display the measurement on a Smith chart with the R plus JX format to prepare for our measurement. Let's connect the VNA to the amplifier. Well, first I apply power to our amplifier. I double check that the left switch is on, in other words, the green light for receive, and the right switch is off there is no red light for transmit. At this point, all we have to do is connect the VNA to the amplifier. We make sure that the connection that is made is nice and snug. And yes, this does make a difference in the measurement. So what do we see on our Smith chart? Well, even with the averaging and smoothing turned on, there is still some wobble in the numbers we see but it isn't too significant. We have to do a bit of, well, calibrated eyeball averaging and decide on which number best represents the best of those that we see. Now, here's what I get. At 144 megahertz, the impedance is 21.8 plus 78.6 J, which gives me a return loss of minus 2.1 dB and an SWR of 8.28 to 1. At 146 megahertz, it is 190.6 plus 134.5 J, which gives me a return loss of minus 3.03 dB and an SWR of 5.8 to 1. At 148, it is 100.5 minus 81.5 J, which gives me a return loss of minus 5.03 dB and an SWR of 3.55 to 1. Now, when we consider that this input is supposed to be connected to a receive antenna, which sports a 50 ohm impedance, I don't know about you, but I'm not too impressed with it. Well, as wonderful as the nano VNA is, it is obvious that there are just certain jobs that it just cannot do well. Now, if the input impedance to this amplifier could have tolerated a signal level of minus 24 dBm, then we could have used the nano VNA and it would have been just fine. Nonetheless, the principles are all the same and it begins with taking care not to overdrive the input of the thing that you're testing. 
We saw here that while the amplifier is intended to live in a 50 ohm system, the receive input impedance clearly doesn't conform to the system impedance. And that was quite a surprise to me. I thought it was going to be a lot closer. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.